Hello guys, welcome back to the Beastie Room. We've got another exciting egg sack pulling today. Now, this is for our Omothymus violosopes, which is the Singapore Blue. Now, we will put a link up to the actual pairing video because the last pairing video of this was absolutely astonishing. And the one before that, we had a successful egg sack as well. Now, she has got an egg sack at the moment, and um, so we're gonna we're gonna pull that today. What we've done differently this time round is we have left this egg sack in here for 45 days. So I'm starting to come round to the theory that um, many of our egg sacs, the common literature is telling everyone to pull their egg sacs at 30 to 35 days. Now I've found with many of the ones that we breed here in the Beastie Room that. 30 days and even 35 days we are looking at literally um, yules so they've not even had that second molt they're not even mobile so they are literally still wrapped around their abdomen and you would have seen this on many of our videos now to my way of thinking that is a little bit too early so I'm thinking now we, we can go a lot longer we can start stretching this out now um, as we were saying, this, this girl here, she has gone 45 days. So it's going to be really, really interesting to see at what stage of the development this egg sac actually is and whether our theory is correct or not. So this is how we learn. This is what we do. We play around and we see what we can do. We've managed to do this with this particular spider because we know her to be fairly settled. She's quite a, um, a relaxed spider and we're not in fear of her. Um, eating her egg sac whereas some of our others are a little bit sensitive and uh, if we leave them too long then there's more and more opportunity that we may lose the egg sac entirely so there is a little bit of backwards and forwards a little bit of weighing up what we actually do with our individual spiders it's it's not a ballpark figure and this is what happens with many things in the hobby everyone's looking for that ballpark information and it, there is none, you know? Everything is tailored to your setup, your environment, your spider. And this is what you need to learn. And by doing so, we all become better keepers. Right, so what we're gonna do, we are gonna check this out. Now, for information now for this, uh, the pairing, we are gonna do a video that will, um, concentrate on what we do with our females and our males and how we go about the actual breeding side of things and, and what we do. So we're gonna give a little bit here. Now we can see here, she molted back on the 27th of the 10th last year. So that was last October she molted. Now um, we finally paired her on the 29th of January. So that was some three months after she had molted um and then then she then in turn produced an egg sac on the second of the fourth so another three months after pairing she's produced her egg sac we've allowed this to go 45 days um our, we are on the 17th of may now yes yeah, 17th of may so um that's 45 days that she's had this egg sac and we're now going to see what has gone on so as you would have often seen in the literature, everyone says, you know, breed your female straight after she's molted. Now we always wait for the molt because hopefully if she's molted, it's gonna be a good long time before she molts again. That gives us a much longer window in which to pair them. But I do think there's a lot to be said for letting our spiders go two, three, four, maybe five, six months before we attempt to pair them. So we're catching them in that latter part of the cycle. And my theory is, is that they are producing eggs. We can build them up in, in size and everything else. And we can see a difference in the shape of the abdomen when they've actually full of eggs and when they're literally just full of food, if you like, you know, just, just carrying extra body weight. So these are all different things that we're looking at, but we will go more in depth with that later on in another video. So what we're gonna do now we are going to see if we can relieve this rather stunning spider of her egg sac. 
Oh, now this is interesting, isn't it? Now this is something that I don't actually normally do, but we did do on this build. And I siliconed everything in place. Now, that can make life a little bit awkward now because um, I would have liked to have actually taken at least this branch out, but we've siliconed it all in. I don't think it's gonna come off particularly easy. We're gonna, oh, there we go. She's gonna need a new home anyway, because as you can see, when she first went in here, it was uh, lovely and lush and green and everything else. And you'll see now that that has all died off. And that's because once we knew we had an egg sac, we stopped um, spraying the enclosure and we basically just left her alone. Very, very important that we leave them alone. Right, now then, we're gonna turn this around. She has gone down in here and you might be able to see her there. She is there with a huge, huge egg sac. Now, this, this is an interesting thing as well. This is, in, in fact, um, an Asian arboreal spider, and she's chosen to dig a burrow deep down in all the substrate and have her egg sac there. So this is a really, really interesting thing. Maybe the, uh, the climate down there is far better for her egg sac than it would have been if she'd been up in the bark or wherever. You know, there's, there's many things to be answered here. So what we're gonna do, we are gonna pull this back. You'll be very careful with your fingers with these guys because they're a very large arboreal spider and they do possess a rather nasty bite. So we have to take Great care. We're literally going to unravel this. And as you can see now, she's not actually that far in. Now, this is interesting. The top of all of this um, substrate is all bone dry. But look at that. We've only literally gone down maybe a centimetre, and we've now got damp, damp substrate. So this will all be, this is what she's been looking for when she's incubating that egg sac. So the humidity down in there, where she's webbed up, all that humidity is seeping through and that's keeping her egg sac really, really nice. Now, I'm gonna, there's a lump of bark here. God, it's so rotten, we're just pulling it away. Right. Hopefully she hasn't moved just yet, so can we see her there? All good. I'm going to see if I can't take this away now. You can see how she's holding on with her pedipalps. If I can keep one grip of that with that, and then we're going to use our paintbrush to try and lift her off of it. And there we go. We managed to. Oh, we can't have my paintbrush. That's mine. There we go. There's our egg sack. And we managed to get that rather easily. She gave that up nice and easy. So we're going to put that back in there like that, just to cover her up a little bit. We might even get our branch back in. Let's see if we can, I'm not going to be able to do this. Oh, there we go. All right, we'll move the tank, and then we'll have a look at this egg sac. Right. Here we go. Now this is our egg sac. Well, it feels like that we've got stuff in there. Now remember, we've always said before, we've got a top and a bottom. This is the bottom. So this is where we're gonna try and break through. So we're gonna open this up. There we go. 
you can see where it bags up you can see through there so we're not in any fear of holding on to our any baby spiders well would you believe it my god this is unbelievable There we go. Now then. We get a good shot of that. Now we can see here, we have still, even at 45 days, we have still got yules. So these are literally just starting to let go of their abdomen which is what everyone thinks of as the egg. It is in fact their abdomen. So these are literally just about to let go. That is incredible. I was really expecting after 45 days for these to be pretty much mobile and uh, all be sort of like running around ready to go. So that is, that is absolutely astounding. Now temperature wise, down on the shelf where this, this female is kept, that normally sits around about 77, 78. So maybe being that little bit cooler is what's holding these back just that little bit. But that's really, really interesting. So we've not actually really gained anything by taking this at 45 days. If we're taking it at 35 days, which is I think what we've done the last one at, they were at a sim very similar stage, almost the same. So um, that is absolutely remarkable. All right, what we're gonna do, we are gonna empty them into our nursery pot. Now this is just our normal nursery pot. Now we, um, we often get asked, excuse me, it's very warm in here. Oh dear, very warm, I'm sweating. We often get asked, about our nursery pots and all it is is a straightforward deli cup with another deli cup cut in half so it's got no bottom in it a bit of stocking and then we literally just put that in there and that gives us our um our uh, nursery pot now what we could do then is we empty all of our youngsters in here and with the lid on there's no ventilation in these lids there's nothing so we literally put the lid on like that and then we pop that in the incubator which we control the temperature in there and then we can, um, they will maintain and stay in here. Now the idea being, there's many, many different ways of doing this, but we have found this to be the most effective and the most trouble free, and also time free. We don't have to touch this again until we take them out of here when they are full blown slings and they're ready to run around and go and be potted up separately. So the water, much much better way of doing it we can keep them on soil and we can keep them on tissue paper and things like that but this is what works best so far that's what we found so what we're going to do we are going to empty i cannot get over i thought these would have been ready right so we are going to tip these out lovely big egg sac that's a, that's a good number in there i'm sure there we go now you can see in there, you can see the, the yellow coloration inside that egg sac. Now this is produced from when she actually lays the eggs, when this was originally just a, a web mat. When she lays her eggs, it's literally like a yolk and all the eggs are within that and then she wraps them up. It's that yellowing from that sort of yolk colored from the egg deposit, which colors the inside of the silk like this and that's why it's that color and beautiful and clean white everywhere else this was a really really nice egg sac very very nice so what we're going to do we can uh, we can have a look here and we will we're just going to move them about if you can see them i want to get the water on them get a good look at them and as you can see, they're not, they're literally just on the point of letting go. 
So they've only just really malted out. These bits here are the the skin that would have covered the actual the whole being. So when it was literally just an egg, and as it as it um, becomes fertile and it grows, that outer casing comes away. They are then left holding on to what you would call it the egg, but it is in fact their abdomen, which is this big sort of yellow bit. That is the actual abdomen. And these are just at the point now where they are just letting go of it. You can just see there, they're just starting to let go. So these will probably be um, maybe another, another month before they are full spiderlings and ready to be rehomed. So they've got a long way to go yet, still. So that is really, really interesting. What we'll do is we will get um, a count on these and we will put it down in the bottom of the video. And we'll find out exactly how many we got. All right, that's another success story for the Beastie Room. I'm very, very pleased with that. And it's been interesting to actually see and leave them to go for that 45 days and see what extra time we got. I think maybe what we might do when we pair her again, which won't be now for probably till the end of the year, maybe the beginning of next year, and we might just put her up higher up in the shelving at a warmer temperature, and we'll let her go for 45 days, and we'll see where that leads us. And we'll see whether that temperature has made any difference to it. But yeah, very, very interesting. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that, and uh, these will soon be available. So fingers crossed. Right then, don't forget, be calm, be gentle, and love your spider. And I will see you soon, guys.